Getting to a certain fitness level after time off can be challenging, especially with the technical sport of swimming. The longer the time off, the more challenging it can be to get into a consistent routine. I've been a swimmer my entire life. There's only been three times, maybe you could count it as five times that I've actually had time out of the water. The first time was when I was in high school, my sophomore, junior, and senior year, which you could count as one time or three times, and my high school coach had me take time out of the water because I was experiencing some burnout, and I ran track. The second time I had time off was in 2016. I was training for the Boston Marathon and I was ending my life in Colorado getting ready to move to Georgia. So I didn't swim for between January 2016 and April 2016. And most recently I had two, two months off due to pool closure. So regardless of the reasons you've had time off, I want to share with you what you can expect when you're ready to get back in the water, what you can expect the first day, the first two to four weeks, and then how you can progress from there with frequency, duration, and intensity. What to expect the first day, maybe the first three days, is going to be dependent on the reasons you took time off. Maybe you were sick, maybe you were injured, had a shoulder problem, lower body, extremity problem. Maybe you were trying a new sport like I did in high school or maybe you just couldn't help it and the pool was closed. So that's really gonna impact how you feel. The second thing is what your experience level was before you took the time off. Were you someone who was a year-round swimmer who's been swimming for 40 plus years? Or did you just start the sport and you were learning some new technique for a week and then all of a sudden you had to take time off? Or maybe you've been in the sport of swimming for a couple years and you're still kind of learning um, some swim technique and building your strength endurance. Also, if you did any type of swim technique with resistance bands or any type of shoulder mobility, shoulder mobility or thoracic spine mobility or other type of strength training during the time off. These factors are all going to impact how you feel the first day or two. Now the first day, I can almost guarantee you're going to feel great, but that's not going to last very long. So expect to have limited endurance and keep the time, your volume low. I suggest you go back and plan to swim at the frequency that you did before time off, assuming you had a little bit of experience. So if you were swimming three days a week before you had time off, I recommend with trying to start with back with three days a week, but you're gonna start at about 10, maybe 25% of the volume or duration that you did during those three days a week. So if you were up to swimming, let's say 2,000 meters three times a week, I suggest you start with maybe 500 to 1,000 meters, and you will soon find out that your warm-up that you used to do is now your main set. The reason you're going to start at a much lower volume is your muscles are going to fatigue much sooner and you're going to be breathless, especially at a higher perceived effort. So the intensity that you want to approach this first week is very low intensity, very low duration, and, and higher frequency. So like I already said, if you were swimming three days a week, I would maintain three days a week. Since the duration is lower and if you have time, maybe you want to bump that up to four or five days a week, keeping that 10 to 20% volume every time you come in and swim. Now, an experienced swimmer like myself, I'm going to test myself, which I already did. And I'm going to try to swim at a pace just to see how it feels that I was at before the time off. And I'm going to quickly realize that I my rate of perceived effort at that pace is much higher than it was and my breathing rate is definitely much higher and I have to rest. So for example, I swam 100 meters at a pace that I could sw easily swim for three or 4,000 meters and 100 meters I was pretty cooked and I stopped and I rested and I called it a day and I said, let's try again tomorrow. So I do suggest, I, I do not suggest, but I do assume experienced swimmers are going to test their fitness out the first week. If you're someone who has a little bit of experience, maybe you swam for a couple years but you still feel like you're a newbie because you haven't been consistent with it, 
I wouldn't try to test yourself. It's only going to lead to frustration. I would go in with the expectation that you're just there to move your body in the water, gather some baseline, um, get a feel for your breathing, get a feel for your muscular fatigue, keep a log of how you're feeling. So if, if you happen to take time off, again, you're going to be able to look back on this and, and know what to expect so you'll be further along than you were at this time. If you're someone who's really brand new to the pool, or maybe you're watching this video and you, are, you didn't have time off because you've never had time in the water, then now is a perfect opportunity to learn a, a new technique. If what you were doing before wasn't working, I suggest trying to learn something new, send me a swim video for analysis. It's important when you're working on technique to do the stroke drills that are specific to you and your technique limiter that will help you advance more rapidly. So again, whether you're a beginner or an experienced swimmer, anyone can send me a swim video for analysis. After that first week of gathering that baseline, noting at what point do you become a little bit more breathless or at what point you notice muscular fatigue, it's time to um, start to think about what your goals are and how you want to get back into a training plan. It may take you two to four weeks of just kind of swimming without really direction, without really any pace or distance. If you're like myself, that's what I'm doing. I just want to get in the water, move around, and just really appreciate the fact that I'm able to swim after so much time off. But when you are ready to get back into a plan, the first thing is frequency. Frequency builds consistency. Consistency is the quickest way to progress. So find those that time and that frequency that you can be in the water. That comes first and then you will know just by feel of when you can start to build duration. And I would keep the intensity level low still you know, go by rate of perceived effort. I wouldn't really structure any pacing workouts for at least a month, so you're not gonna get frustrated or discouraged because your fitness level is going to be lower. So as you're building duration, if you do wanna add some shorter form-based 25s or 50 meters, that would actually be okay. And do as many as you have done in the past and just note, where your fitness might break down and then stop. So there's no need at this point, you're still in your first month, to be doing some faster pace workouts if your form is starting to break down. But it's definitely good to do it, especially if you're someone like myself who has a lot of experience. And I know the feeling. I know the feeling of when my form is breaking down due to an increased effort. And when you're scheduling your workouts, I would schedule, again, it just depends on how frequently you can be in the water. Even if you're in the water one day a week, I would add, the, I would do some warming up, easy swimming with some stroke drills based on your technique limiter. Maybe that's one complete practice. I would do a strength workout where you're working on upper body strength with paddles and a pool buoy, as, as long as your technique's okay and you're not gonna hurt your shoulder wearing paddles. But I think paddles are really good for strength. And then I would just do one day a week of endurance. That gives you three key workouts to do. And if you wanted to add more, or if you wanted to take one away, as a beginner, I would probably take the strength workout away at first and just do the technique day and the endurance day. If you are more advanced and you want to add more time, I'd add another day where you're focusing on all three, technique, strength, and endurance in one workout. If you're interested in learning more about how to structure a workout, you could always contact me. I actually have a few programs that I've already developed. Um, one specifically is Swimming Made Easy with over 101 swim workouts where I outline at least 10 workouts that are strength specific, endurance specific, technique specific, tempo specific, threshold specific, and speed specific. So that'll give you a little bit more education on what types of workouts um, and what the purpose of each type of workout is. I know from experience that you only use your breathing pattern and swimming muscles in the water. So the best way to maintain frequency and consistency is to not take time out of the water and enjoy the experience. In the words of Michael Phelps, I'm going to quote him, half quote him. For five years, he swam 365 days a year. 
He says for every missed day in the water, it takes two days to get back. So the best way to stay in swimming shape is to not take time out of the water.